कोर्स ऑन न्यूमेरिकल लीन राज्यभरण एप्लीकेशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ लेक्चर बिफोर गोइंग टू द ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ लेक्चर लेट अस क्विकली रिकॉल व्हाट वी डिड इन द लास्ट लेक्चर इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी वर डूइंग व्हाट वी कॉल हेजनबर्ग ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन व्हिच इज एसेंशियली to decompose the matrix a into product of two matrices so that we could be able to obtain the best approximate solution today we are going to have a computational methods for the symmetric eigen value problem in this lecture we'll first describe some special properties of the symmetric eigen value problem which have been exploited in development of several special algorithms for the problem we shall then describe briefly four such methods the first and foremost method is the bisection method secondly we have the symmetric qr iteration algorithm thirdly we have divide and conquer method fourthly we have jacobi method let us look at it to each method separately except for the jacobi method all the other ones compute the eigen values by first transforming the symmetric matrix a into the symmetric triagonal form so essentially what you are doing you transform the symmetric matrix a into the symmetric tridiagonal form if the eigen vectors are desired the inverse iteration method has to be invoked by replacing the hezenberg matrix with the symmetric tridiagonal matrix t now let us see what are the some special properties of the symmetric eigen value problem the real square form of a real symmetric matrix is a diagonal matrix that is there exists an orthogonal matrix q such that we could able to write it as q transpose a q will be equal into diagonal of lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda n where lambda i i is equal to 1 to n are the eigen values of the coefficient matrix a the eigen values of a symmetric matrix are real and the eigen vectors can be chosen to be orthogonal then we see minimax characterization that is what we call it as koren fisher minimax theorem this is very very important especially when the matrices are being considered so what this theorem says is let lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 greater than or equal to lambda 3 so on so forth greater than or equal to lambda n each of the lambdas are eigen values distinct eigen values of a symmetric matrix a then we have lambda i will be equal to minimum of s maximum of x not equal to 0 but which is in s such that x transpose ax upon x transpose of x x transpose ax upon x transpose of x where the minimum is taken over all subspaces of dimension n minus i plus 1 and the maximum is taken over all non zero vectors in the subspace s in particular we can write it as lambda 1 is equal to lambda max maximum of x not equal to 
x transpose a upon x transpose of x. Now, general perturbation theory. Let a be a n by n real symmetric matrix. Let a prime is equal to a plus e, where e is a real symmetric perturbation of the matrix A and let lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 greater than or equal to lambda n and lambda 1 prime greater than or equal to lambda 2 prime so on so forth greater than or equal to lambda n prime be the eigenvalues of A and A prime respectively. So essentially the lambda 1 greater than or lambda 2 eigenvalues of A and these primes are eigenvalues of A prime. Then it follows from the Burfeig theorem that lambda i minus norm of 2 norm is less than or equal to lambda i prime less than or equal to lambda i plus norm of e2 where i is equal to 1 to n. This result is remarkable. It says that the eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix are colored well conditioned. We will say that they are all well conditioned. That is, that is small changes in the elements of A can cause only small changes in the eigenvalues of matrix A. Specifically speaking, it says that Eigenvalues of the perturbed matrix A prime cannot differ from the eigenvalues of the original matrix A by more than the largest eigenvalue of the perturbed matrix E. To make more understanding let us see the following example. We consider the matrix 3 by 3 matrix. 3 by 3 matrix and E is equal to 10 power minus 4 times of I 3 3. The eigenvalues of A are minus of 0 0.4203, 0 0.2336 and 10.1867. The eigenvalues are A plus C are minus of 0 0.4203, 0 0.2337 and 10.1868. Note that norm of E2 will be equivalent to 10 power minus 4. Rank 1 perturbation property, what it says is, we state the theorem that shows how the eigenvalues are shifted by a factor E is a rank 1 perturbation matrix. The result plays an important role in the divide and conquer algorithm for the symmetric eigenvalue problem. Eigenvalues of a rank 1 perturbation matrix can be stated as suppose b is equal to a plus alpha times of b times of b transpose where a is an n by n symmetric matrix alpha is a scalar and b is a vector and assuming that lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 etc with eigenvalues of a and assuming that lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 1 prime, lambda 2 prime like this with eigenvalues of matrix B. Then we can write it as lambda i prime which belongs to the interval lambda i lambda i minus 1 for i is equal to 1 to n for alpha greater than or equal to 0 and lambda i prime is lambda i plus 1 lambda i 
for i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 if alpha is less than 0. To support this, let us look at into another example. Consider this example where alpha is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 1, 2, 3 transpose. The eigenvalues of b are lambda 3 prime that is minus of 3.3028, lambda 2 prime is equal to 0, lambda 1 prime is 0 0.3028. The eigenvalues of a are lambda 3 is this value minus of 0.5157 and lambda 2 is equal to 0.1709 and lambda 1 is 11.3448. It is easy to verify that lambda 2 is less than lambda 1 prime less than lambda 1 and lambda 3 is less than lambda 2 prime less than lambda 2. So we can look it into very quickly the bisection method for the symmetric tridiagonal matrix. Here we describe a method for finding the eigenvalues or a symmetric matrix. The method is particularly useful if eigenvalues are required in an interval in principle. However, it can be used to find all eigenvalues. First, the symmetric matrix A is transformed into a symmetric triadial matrix called T by using householder method that is householder method described in previous lecture what we did was that is an orthogonal matrix P is constructed in a such a way that you can have this kind of matrix. P transpose P multiplied with P A. So essentially this will become T. You see over here lambda alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n minus 1, alpha n. Beta 1, beta 2, beta n minus 2, beta n minus 1. Beta 1, beta 2, beta n minus 1. So rest are all zeros. So essentially you have the elements on the main diagonal, subdiagonal, super diagonal. Rest are all zeros. So a three term recursion let P i denote the characteristic polynomial of the i cross i principal sub matrix of A T. Then these polynomials satisfy a three term recursion. P i of lambda is alpha i minus lambda times of P i minus 1 lambda minus beta square i minus 1 p i minus 2 lambda for i is equal to 2, 3, etc. n with p naught of lambda is 1, p 1 of lambda is alpha 1 minus lambda. So what this theorem says, let T be a unreduced symmetric triadal matrix. Let the eigenvalues of the kth leading principle minor of T of k of T is denoted by lambda 1 less than k, lambda 2 less than k, etc. Then we will have this expression. Lambda i of k plus 1 less than lambda i of k i plus 1 k, lambda i plus 1 k plus 1 for every k is equal to 1 to k minus 1. So next we will have a theorem. What the theorem says is the number of sign agreements between the consecutive terms of a sequence of polynomials that is P naught of mu, P1 of mu, Pn of mu equals the number of eigenvalues of T which are strictly greater than mu. Note that 
the sequence pk of mu might contain zeros in this case the convention is that pk q of mu has the opposite sign of pk minus 1 of mu if pk mu is 0. You can see from this example, look at this example. This is the main diagonal, sub diagonal, rest are all zeros. So, obviously, the characteristic polynomial is pk lambda or p lambda, p naught of lambda is 1, p1 of lambda is 2 minus lambda, p2 lambda is 2 minus lambda whole square minus 1, p3 lambda is 2 minus lambda times of p2 lambda minus p1 lambda, that is 2 minus lambda whole cube minus 2 into 2 minus lambda and let mu is equal to 0. Then the sequence p0, p1, p2, p3, etc. is 1, 2, 3, 4. There are three agreements in sign, thus all the eigenvalues of all, eigenvalues are greater than or equal to 0. In fact, since P3 of 0 is 4 not equal to 0, it follows that all the eigenvalues are, eigenvalues are positive. Let us look it into other way, let mu is equal to 2. Then the sequence P0 of mu, P1 of mu, P2 of mu, P3 of mu is given by like this, 1, 0, minus 1, 0. The signs are positive, negative, negative, positive. There is only one agreement in sign confirming that T has one eigenvalue greater than 2. So therefore, we can easily simplify that the eigenvalues of T are 2, 2 plus r root 2, 2 minus root 2. So if you look at into this algorithm, the bisection algorithm for the symmetric eigenvalue problem, what is the input you have? An n by n matrix, symmetric triangle matrix T, an integer m less than or equal to n and epsilon greater than 0. What is the output you have? An approximation to the eigenvalue lambda n minus m plus 1, assuming that lambda 1 is less than lambda 2 less than lambda n. So in the step 1, find an interval s1, s2 containing lambda n minus m plus 1 since lambda i is less than or equal to norm of t. Initially we can take s1 is equal to minus of norm of t infinity, s2 is norm of t infinity. So we can compute s3 as s1 plus s2 divided by 2. Compute n of s3 that is the number of agreements in sign in the sequence. So you will have essentially 1 p1 of s3, p2 of s3, pn of s3. So if n of s3 is less than m, set s2 is equal to s3, otherwise set s1 is equal to s3. So what is the step 3 you do? Test whether s2 minus s1 is less than epsilon. So that is s2 minus s1 less than epsilon. If so, accept s3 is equal to s1 plus s2 by 2 as an approximate value of lambda n minus m plus 1, otherwise go to step 2. After k steps, the desired 0 is located in the interval of the width s2 minus s1 upon 2 power k. So, to make brevity, let us see this example. Let us consider this matrix. Main diagonal, sub diagonal, super diagonal, rest are all zeros, triangle matrix. Suppose we want to approximate lambda 1 is equal to 2 minus root 2, m3, m is equal to 3. So what is the first iteration 0, 
Initially, S1 is minus 4, S2 is 4, S3 is 0. So, n of S3 and n of 0 is 0, set S1 is equal to S3, like the algorithm which we spoke just now. And in the first iteration, S1 is equal to 0, S2 is equal to 4, S3 is equal to 2, n of S3 is n of 2, that is 2, which is less than 3, then set S2 is equal to S3. Iteration 2 is S1 is equal to 0, S2 is equal to 0, S3 is 0 plus 2 by 2 which is 1, n of S3 is 2 which is less than 3. Then we set S2 is equal to S3. So iteration 4, S1 is equal to 0, S2 is equal to 1, S3 is equal to 0 plus 1 by 2, 0.5. So n of S3 is 3, set S1 is equal to S3. The eigenvalue lambda 1 is Clearly in the interval 0.5 comma 1 which is in fact the case. We can continue our iterations until the length or the interval S2 minus S1 is less than epsilon. Flop count and stability. Let us see for this algorithm. Once A is transformed into T, it requires about big O of n flops for evaluating the sequence pi of mu. Thus, to find k eigenvalues, only order of k n flops will be needed. So, what are the remarks over here? A remarkable fact is that absolute error in the computed eigenvalues are small, but the relative errors in the small eigenvalues may be large. If Eigenvectors are desired, inverse iteration can be invoked. Computing one eigenvector then requires only order of n flops since an n by n triadiagonal matrix system can be solved using order of n flops. Thus, in principle, all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be computed order of n square flops by this method, once the symmetric matrix A has been transformed into the symmetric matrix T, symmetric triangle matrix T, however, the method is best used to find a selected number of eigenvalues, the eigenvalues in an interval of or a prescribed number of eigenvalues to the left or right of the given eigenvalue. So yes, next is the symmetric QR iteration method, how it works? To apply the QR iteration method to a symmetric triangle system matrix, we note that if the starting matrix is a symmetric triangle matrix T, then so is each matrix TK in the sequence T of K is equal to mu K of L that is equal to QK R of K. And furthermore, we need only order of n flops to generate each tk. Note that QR factorization of a asymmetric triangle matrix requires only order of n flops. Thus, the triangle symmetric QR iteration is an order of n square algorithm. In continuation to that, also since the eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix are all real, and real square form of a symmetric matrix is a diagonal rather than a triangular matrix. The double shift strategy discussed for the general eigenvalue problem previously is not needed in this case. Whereas, in this case, a popular shift known as Wilkinson shift. So, that is Wilkinson shift is needed. Instead of taking the nth entry at every iteration as the shift, the eigenvalue or the trailing 2 by 2 matrix is that closer to the nth entry, usually chosen as the shift. This is known as Wilkinson shift. Thus, if a trailing 2 by 2 submatrix of Tk is given by like this, then the Wilkinson shift is 
mu is equal to T n n of k plus R minus sin of R times of R square plus T n T n minus n whole square. So continue like this where R is equal to T k of n minus 1 comma n minus 1 minus T k of n n upon 2. It is possible to compute T of k plus 1 from T k without explicitly forming the matrix T k minus mu k times of L. This is known as the implicit symmetric QR algorithm. Symmetric QR iteration with the Elkinson shift that is input is a symmetric matrix, output is the appropriate eigenvalue of a matrix A. So, the first phase what you do is transform matrix A into a symmetric triangle matrix T using orthogonal similarity transformation. So, that means you need to do what you call orthogonal similarity transformation. So, thereby you do get P times of A P transpose is T. In the second phase what you do is apply single shift QR iteration to T with the Wilkinson shift Q. Then we set T is equal to T1 and for K is equal to 1, 2, etc. and 2 until the convergence that is T K minus mu L is equal to Q K times of R K and T K plus 1 updated R K times of Q K plus mu into L. Reverse the multiplication with the shift added then that makes the end of the algorithm. So, if you look at into this algorithm, what would be the convergence of the symmetric QR iteration with the LK shift? It is natural to think that what is the state of the convergence? How fast it is? So, the QR algorithms with the Wilkinson shift always converges. The rate of convergence is cubic for most cases. In the worst case, it is at least quadratic. So, it is a quite good enough. In most cases, it is quadra cubic and but for worst case, it is quadratic. So, if you look at into the flop counts, it is natural to think that what is the flop count? The transformation T is equal to 4 by 3 NQ, when is the size of the matrix. Eigenvalue computation is big O of N square. Note that the QR factorization of a triangle matrix requires only order of N flops. All the eigenvectors of T a little over 6 n cube on an average will have a convergence. So, if you look at the round of error property as in the general non-symmetric case, the symmetric QR with implicit shift is unstable. It can be shown that given a symmetric matrix A, the symmetric QR algorithm with implicit shift generates an orthogonal matrix Q and a diagonal matrix D. So, we can write it as Q transpose AQ is equal to D plus E. So, that means the error will be like this is slowly growing function of small n where n is the size of the matrix. So, the accuracy of the computed eigenvalues is each computed eigenvalue lambda i satisfies the inequality that is absolute value of lambda i minus lambda i cap is less than or equal to mu times of n mu times of norm of a2. Thus, the absolute error in each case computed eigenvalue is very small. So, today lecture what we learned is how actually the eigenvalue computation can be done using four different ways out of which two ways we already did it in today's lecture and rest of the things we do it in the next lecture. So, thank you for staying back with this lecture. Thank you once again.